This is a tale of gold and blood, of kidnap and revenge, spirits and yokai, light and dark, men and monsters. This is Neo. Or is it Neo? I, I, I actually don't know how to pronounce the name of this game. Uh, you could pronounce it either way. The game gives you a lot of Japanese pronunciations for a lot of the names, but not for the title. Enjoy. Or don't. Okay, so before we begin the review proper, this game does bear, as many reviewers have already pointed out, an uncanny resemblance to a particular other series that I shall not name. Because if I spend all my time talking about that game series, then I won't spend my time talking about this game. And honestly, comparing Neo to the series that shall not be named, feels like a little bit of an insult to Neo. While Neo is very much like that other series, this game puts its own unique stamp on the whole genre and manages to make it its own. First and foremost, Neo is a fighting game. You have mainly melee weapons and some ranged weapons. You go out into the levels, you fight bad guys with the ultimate goal of typically defeating a boss character that ends the level and you get returned to the map screen. So what's the combat like? Pretty awesome. You've got five weapons, and it's a good range of weapons as well. You've got a set of fast dual swords, you've got a middle of the road sword, you've got a really powerful strong axe, which is really slow. In addition to that, you've got the long reach of the spear, and the exotic Kusari Gama, which I've no idea if I pronounced that right, I might have just butchered it. Besides the five melee weapons, you've got three ranged weapons, but the ranged weapons aren't as effective. They're, they're better for killing the snipers in the distance rather than killing the enemies that are right here in front of you. They lack power compared to your melee weapons and you're limited in ammunition anyway. And then there's the armor. You can equip five pieces of armor at the same time, head to toe, to form a full suit. You've got three categories of armor. You've got light, medium, and heavy. With heavy armor, it's better to stand your ground and block. With light armor, it's better to dodge. In addition to two melee weapons, two ranged weapons, five bits of armor, you can also equip two charms, which are kind of like auxiliary power-up items. They help increase your stats a bit in certain ways, depending on the charm. And besides that, you've got eight shortcut items, consumable items that you can deploy in battle. So like a certain other game series, you'll spend all your time, pretty much all your time, fighting enemies to acquire a certain item. In this case, it's Amrita. Amrita is the unit of currency that you use to power up. You visit a shrine, exchange the Amrita for a point on one of your stats and makes you more powerful. The thing is, is that every level you buy costs you more Amrita than the previous one, which means you have to keep on getting more and more and more of it. Amrita drops from enemies when you kill them, but similarly, when you die, you drop all your Amrita on the ground and it forms a grave site. Now, if you can re you respawn and if you can get back to the grave site and touch it, you get all your Amrita back as if nothing happened. If, however, you die before you get to the grave site, it disappears and you lose the Amrita for good. Yeah, it does sound like a certain other series that shall not be named. But at this point, the game diverges and Neo becomes very much its own animal. For a start, each of the game's five weapons can be used in one of three stances. High stance moves tend to deal high damage, but they tend to be slower as well. The mid stance is a middle of the road stance. Special moves tend to include parry and counter attacks. 
And then the low stance is the faster but less hard hitting, the weaker stance. But it tends to involve dodge moves. And each of these three stances can be switched between on the fly as you play the game with any of the game's weaponry, with any of the game's melee weapons. Which means that if you can equip two weapons and you have three stances for each, that effectively gives you six methods of attack at any given moment. You can switch between your weapons and stances very easily and you'll find yourself doing it because there will be moments when the enemy are, for example, you've knocked the enemy off their feet so you switch to the high stance to deal more damage but then you'll run into that big top enemy that you can't fight head on and you can't afford to wait for your weapon to swing round so you switch to the low stance to gain a speed advantage. Similarly, if you're good at blocking, uh, if you're good at countering and parrying enemy attacks, which I'm not, I'm terrible at it, but if you're good at the parrying timing, you can make use of the mid stance and turn enemy attacks back on them. As if that wasn't good enough, the game features a mechanic known as, well, first of all, it features something called Chi. So you've got your life gauge at the top left hand corner and just beneath it, you've got your Chi gauge, which for the purposes of this game is basically your stamina, but it's sort of more your spiritual energy. The way it works is you perform a physical action like sprinting, attacking, you block an enemy attack, you use a special move, whatever, it costs you Chi and your chi slowly regenerates over time, but it depletes faster. So to offset that, what you do is you chi pulse. A chi pulse is, put quite simply, a well-timed press of the stance switch button after you've performed a combo. See, the idea is that the game gives you back part of the chi you expended on the combo you just performed, if you can time the button press. It is absolutely essential, essential, that you learn how to Chi Pulse. At first you won't know how to do it, it's like the stance switch system itself. You won't know what the hell to do with it, and you won't really appreciate it at first. In addition to recovering your Chi faster, if you've purchased a certain special ability, Chi Pulsing boosts your melee attack damage for a brief moment. In addition to that, Chi pulses can be used to clear out the negative chi pulls on the ground that the yokai or demons leave behind. Those yokai puddles, they prevent your chi from regenerating and they prevent the enemy's chi from depleting. Now do you clear them out with your chi pulse? Oh and don't go thinking that there's only like five melee weapons in the whole game. There isn't. There are five styles of melee weapon. There are actually... Actually, I have no idea how many weapons there are because it's a bit like Borderlands. It's RNG loot that spills out of the enemy and out of chests when they die. And the game is very generous with this. And each weapon and armor has defense and toughness, yes. But it also has additional randomized stats. Things like, uh, I don't know, things like chi damage, um, chi cost reduction when using the weapon with a certain stance, uh, particular elemental types of damage, there's, there's too many to name. And each of these weapons has a different number of these stats based on the weapon's rarity. The rarer the weapon, the more of these additional bonuses there are on the weapon. And if the weapon doesn't have a stat that you like, if for example, I'm useless at parrying, so if there's like a parry stat, that's useless to me. So what you do is you go to the blacksmith and respec it. The respec process is randomized, but I tend to find that the first and at worst the second attempt at respecking an item usually gives me something I can use. The items on the list can't duplicate though. So if you've already got like strong attack damage boost, you can't get it on any of the others. If you try to inherit a value onto another weapon and it doesn't let you, it doesn't tell you why. And this confuses a hell of a lot of people because the game says, no, no, sorry, can't inherit that value. But it doesn't tell you why. It's annoying. I had to go on Reddit and find out. 
but it's because you can't duplicate certain qualities. The blacksmith, by the way, can make your gear for you, both weapons and armor. You do need the blueprint though, which is why it's a good idea to do a lot of the side missions because you get a lot of smithing texts from the side missions. There's a lot of awesome looking armor in this game though. I recently tried to work with a tank build, a more of a warrior build with heavy armor, the axe, the spear. And I was pleasantly surprised at how, because this is not my normal style of play. I was pleasantly surprised at how well it worked. And I think it's partially because not just the weapons are well balanced against each other. You've got big heavy weapons at one end, you've got fast, lighter weapons at the other end. But you've also got the armour. The armour makes a real difference in this game. And all of this means that it doesn't matter what approach you choose to take. As long as you... As long as you're not stupid. As long as you don't try to equip two melee weapons that are both the same, for example. Light armour, medium, heavy armour, fast weapon, slow weapon, it doesn't matter. The game will support whatever you try. Melee combat is the main form of combat in this game. You do have ranged weapons, but you're limited to ammunition. In addition, however, to the way of the warrior using your melee weapons, you've also got way of the ninja, which allows you to use ninjutsu abilities. And then you've got way of the omnio mage, which allows you to use magic. Now, the ninja and mage stuff basically boil down to consumables. The ninjutsu stuff, for example, encompass things like shuriken and poison shuriken, throwing stars. Also things like the, uh, the grenades, which I forget the name of now, and the caltrops, which are called makabishi. Some of these things I can't remember the name of. They're caltrops that spike the enemy's feet when they step on them and slow them down. And then you've got the mage abilities, which again are consumable items, but are things like fire talismans that you can again apply to your weapon and, and deal a burning effect to the enemy, or a lightning, or earth, or something like that, air, water. And then you've got things that can devigorate the enemy. The devigorate talisman prevents them from recharging chi as smoothly, giving you an edge in a fight. You've also got things like regeneration amulets that can heal you. Uh, amulets which can depower the enemy's defense or empower your attack. It's obviously more potent if you specialize in things, but my half ninja, half mage build that I usually use, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. And as if that wasn't good enough, you get a guardian spirit. The idea of a guardian spirit is every single one of them gives you a 20% damage reduction from all sources. That be physical damage, uh, chi damage, fire, poison, whatever. 20% reduction across the board. In addition, each spirit has a list of specialized abilities which it grants you passively. And there is a great number of these spirits besides the three you start with. You can only choose one of the three to start with, but you, after a few levels, you will start building up a collection of spirits. You've got spirits that bolster your defense and resistance to poison. You've got spirits that are designed to help you find items or gold or amrita or stuff. Uh, there's, there's, there's too many of them to name. There's a spirit for every occasion. The levels are diverse and colorful. Some people have said that this game is too dark and it is true the game is dark, but you can see everything. Loot glows very brightly. You can't miss it, especially given the darkness of the rest of the level. So you've really got no excuse for not being able to see things. It's not as if the demons don't stand out with their massive orangey, reddy, yellow, glowy horns, you know. They, they're pretty easy to spot. The enemies are just as diverse in this game. You've got, broadly speaking, human and yokai, which are basically demons. The two styles of these combatants are very different, and you're going to have to learn how to deal with them separately and they're both very dangerous, just for slightly different reasons. There's an excellent array of enemies on offer, despite that. Though. They use varying different types of attacks. Some enemies prefer to engage you at a distance, others prefer to engage you up close. Some enemies, some yokai in particular, will slow you down. The flying bolt flings this strip of cloth at you and impairs your movement speed. Prey that you can, that you've got a good defense when that happens. 
you've got other enemies that tower over you, like the one-eyed only. They're like three times as high and about five or six times your mass. If you're wearing heavy armor and have good physical abilities though, despite the fact that some of these yokai tower over you, you can still block their attacks very efficiently. It just takes a bit of confidence. You have to, you have to risk your own neck just that one time to see, can I actually block this attack? Oh wow, I can! Against the bigger guys, once you realize that, it opens up a whole new range of possibilities, or it does for me. I'm used to a ninja mage. I can't take those attacks. I have to dodge out of the way. As you might expect, the bosses are big, have masses of health, and have attacks that the rest of the enemies don't. Some of the bosses I could beat on the first attempt. Yeah, I'm getting good at this game. Other bosses, though, will take you a million attempts to beat. The first time I played this game, the first boss on the island, in the first level. Holy shit, I must have died against that guy 20 or 30 times before I bested him. The first level can be a bitch to complete, simply because, not just of him, but those enemies near the entrance to the Elder's house on the hill, there's like four enemies there, and they're all waiting just round the corner in ambush, Jesus Christ. Just know that there is a back way into that place. If you're a warrior, you can take them if you're careful, but it's really difficult. What I'm trying to say is that the fighting in this game is really hard. You should expect to die a lot. The series that shall not be named, the tagline, which you all know, that is very appropriate to this game as well. You will drop dead a lot. The combat in this game is quicker but you have more variety of stuff. You have a huge range of ninja and mage items to assist you as well. Range of consumable items that you can use regardless of what class you are. And the game, just like the series that shall not be named, the game never feels unfair. Except for one moment in the game. Oh. Right, in the first area, there is a level called Invitation from the Warrior of the West. It's level 27. Don't even think about it. I'm serious here. I'm not one for spoilers normally. I avoid spoilers. Warrior of the West. Do not fight him. Even if you're level 30 to the mission's 27. He is overpowered as fuck. I, I don't know where he gets his chi from. I really don't. It's his chi, and he just runs at you. He, he sheaths his sword, and then runs at you and slashes you, and does masses of damage to you if you've got your guard down. And even if you've got your guard up, it pierces your guard. It, the, I swear, this guy is utterly unfair. I eventually beat him, in this video, in this video that's on screen right now, I beat him after a fair few attempts, and I was level 50-something. 50-something, and the mission is 27. I'm almost like double the level, and he's still rock hard. By the way, this game has some online features, despite the fact that it's primarily a single-player game. Like the series that shall not be named, Revenant grave sites appear for all your fellow players who have died there. And if you see a mass of grave sites in front of you, you know there's something up ahead. And if you can just edge over the grave, it tells you how they died, which clues you in even further. The online system also allows you to select a clan to be a part of and gain one or two passive bonuses. And everybody who fights in the game online accrues points for their clan, and clans have allegiances to either the red or blue side, and the winning side gets a bonus that's distributed to everybody. In addition, there's, nowadays, it's been patched in, but when I first got the game it wasn't there. There's a PvP mode to the game as well, allowing players to actually fight each other. 
but mainly you come to Neo for the single player story campaign. And the story here is told in more explicit terms, the occasional cutscene when you do a primary mission. And unlike a series that shall not be named, it doesn't give all the game's lore in item descriptions. There's an actual lore section in the game which describes everything. The characters, the guardian spirits, uh, even lets you re-watch key cutscenes that you've already seen. Guys, I love this game. I haven't finished it, though, because it's that hard, okay? It is that hard. I do recall with one of my builds with the Ninja Mage, I did get as far as the battlefield, you know, where Edward, Edward Kelly summons that massive monstrosity. And I still haven't fought that monstrosity. I got to the end of the level where he summons it, and uh, I haven't been any further than that. So I really can't tell you how long this game is. And even if I had played it to completion, I can't tell you how long you'll spend playing it, because just like the series that shall not be named, it requires you to get better in order to make any progress. You, you have to engage the enemies, learn from your mistakes, and the key is to learn. Because if you don't learn, you will simply die repeatedly, and you'll never make any progress. And this game is a level by level affair. It's not an open world game. So you can't just turn around and go back out whenever the fancy takes you. You can abandon a level halfway through using a certain special item, but if you do that, you lose all your Amrita, the thing that powers you up. There have been no games that have even come close to the series that shall not be named. But even though I haven't played all the games in the series that shall not be named, in my opinion, the two that I have played, this surpasses both of them. I mean, this, I mean, forget Lords of the Fallen, that doesn't even come close to the series that shall not be named. This, I think, actually takes that game company's crown from them. It actually does. This game is that damn good. It not only takes that concept, it just runs with it in a different direction and adds so much to the concept. So much so that you think to yourself, why did nobody think of this before? Why didn't I think of this before? Neo is a fucking masterpiece. And I don't say that lightly. I actually... I don't say this at all. Because I don't think that anything is. But I'm going to say it because... It, it's, it's, it's just the case. This game is perfect. I don't say that lightly. This game is perfect. I mean, even in Horizon Zero Dawn, I found a couple of floating bushes. There are no glitches in this game that I've encountered. No crashes, no problems, no... Well, I mean, occasionally a sword clips through a wall, but what do you expect? It's a fighting game. It's just... There's nothing wrong with this. The weapons, the armor, the chi pulse, in particular, the enemies are diverse. Everything is expertly balanced. The chi pulse. How the hell did they come up with the chi pulse idea? It's perfectly integrated. If you like this kind of game, if you like fighting games, you like RPGs, character driven, stats, and you like messing around with your weapons, customizing it and changing things out. If you like all that finicky stuff, you're gonna love this game. Go out and get it. You probably already have it because this game came out a while ago and July, August is traditionally dead for video game reviews, which is the only reason I'm doing this review now, by the way. Guys, if you haven't got it already, go out and get it. There shouldn't even be a question mark there. There should The question, should I buy Neo, should not exist. Just get it. See you next time.